Obi is a mere sensation. But Peter Obi has now offered us something to follow. Hello and welcome to today's discussion. It's good to have you right here. Whether you're obedient, whether you are articulated, or whether you are, of course, the bat, you have to actually pay attention to what we have to discuss today. Recently, the APC governors went to go and meet Nwike at his residence with regards to, you know, Salah, they call it, and more of like part of the whole politicking. And I was watching closely. Actually, the reception was quite good. Mike is someone I respect so much as a governor, or would I say as a seasoned politician with regards to the, uh, you know, the, the, the crowd he pulls, or would I say his own definition of loyalty, having been one of the party member that has stayed consistent in the party for as long as practicable and has never left the party. That's one thing I respect him for, integrity. Now, I can't say much for other politicians who have cross capitated here and there. Let me remind you that Atiku of the PDP was once an APC chieftain that actually campaigned for our current president with all due respect, Muhammad Buhari. Let me remind you a couple. APC! <laughs> Thank you. We will change Jonathan, don't worry. See the man who is going to change Jonathan. The chairman of our great party, a party that is set to make history in our country. Last night, when I stood here, I said, history is going to be made at this venue. I said this convention is going to also make history in our political evolution. I also said this party is going to renew our democracy in this country. And since last night, you have witnessed what I describe as the most credible, transparent, elections to be ever conducted by any political party in this country. I am coming. I am coming. Jagaba has been my contemporary in the fight to restore democracy and sustain democracy and deepen democracy in this country. And therefore, I want to single him out to pay a special tribute for his contributions. Having said that, I also want to use this opportunity given to me to congratulate the winner of these primary elections, General Muhammad Buhari. General Muhammad Buhari has been an embodiment of nation building in this country for decades. And he has continued to offer himself and his services to this country. Your Excellency, I want to assure you the support of this great party, which is the newest political party in Africa today.
So just for you to see that when it comes to politicking in Nigeria, it's actually an interesting story. So it's rare for you to find people that have stayed consistent in one party and still have some form of integrity with them. Let's not forget even our Peter Obi, or would I say even though I'm in the obedient party, was in the PDP and now is in the Liberal Party. Already from our previous videos, we understand the reason why he had to move. Because come on, if Wike could not get his way, who thinks Peter Obi would get his way? Do we understand? But let's look at this conversation I saw on the Arise News as I get to analyze and discuss a couple of things. <laughs> What about the visit of the APC governor, Stomike? This is what our correspondent had to say. Uh, there's nothing wrong in APC it's looking, seeing an opportunity there and, uh, uh, I mean, stretching a handshake, you know, with Wiki. So you're suggesting that there is really, they might see an if opportunity that there, the case, like that's what If it was that about. was the case, it's a good political move. Okay, the that truth the of the matter is that River State is very important. Now, I just wanted to understand that politicians themselves, whether they might be in different parties or not, they never see themselves as enemies like that when once they have more of like a common goal or something. So if you are there being in one party or the other, insulting yourselves in the comments or maybe insulting me as well, which I don't really care that much, it's all part of the engagement. Just know that the people that we are fighting over right now, they love each other very much. It's all a matter of interest. But let's go on with the conversation. What is on the table right now is votes. How do we get votes? If Wicca can give us votes, why must we be his enemy? And how does that, you know, amount to jettisoning our own guy, Rotimi Amechi? No. But the fact is, can Rotimi Amechi give us the votes we need in rivers? The answer is obvious. Maybe not because there are too much fracas, too many disagreements here and there. So for me, speaking practically, yes. and that is the way an Ashwadu's mind will work. Mm. We visited Wike after the elections, the primaries. Wike is part of us. No, sorry. Amechi. Amechi. Amechi is part of us. And there's nothing. But everybody has limitations. If we recognize Amechi's limitation with respect to electoral fortunes, mm. we, cannot be, we cannot be playing to the gallery and pretend as if nothing is wrong. You see, when we look at the person of Nwike and Roti Miyamishi, now Nwike is giving Roti Miyamishi quite um, hell there in River State, which I think it might be difficult for him to even go back to his home state. And APC has had the person of Roti Mi in the APC, or would I say, as their strong man when it comes to governizing or getting votes in River State. But since Wike is dead now as a sitting governor, and with the way he has been in the party, come on, look at his influence alone in the PDP. In the recent presidential, um, you know, ticket elections, Atiku got himself 371 votes, while Wike got 237. The difference is just about 33 or 34, if I'm not mistaken. And the reason why he clearly had this little margin was because Tambuwa stepped down for the person of Atiku, which, of course, Wike himself got to verify. Now, let's look at the person of Rutimi Amishi as well, because people are saying that the same way Wike has been sidelined, in the PDP, which he has been very, very vocal about, and has made it possible, or what I say, necessitated the visit by the APC governors to him, maybe to, you know, bring him to APC or something, which I don't know if it's possible, that Rotimi Amishi himself might also be facing the same sideline, because Nwige himself came second after Atiku. Rotimi Amishi came second after Tinubu, even though this is what the APC themselves think. And he also came second at the APC primaries. One will... Distant uh, second. Distant uh, second. Distant uh, second. But he came second. Correct. He came second. Correct. Uh, and Amishi got 316. Indeed, it's very distant. It's even more than 50%, I would say. So, indeed, it's distant. But if we look at it, we could say logically, you know, looking at the party standing, that Rotimi Amishi should be running with Tinubu. Since Tinubu himself is Muslim, and Rotimi is 
maybe Christian. Let's not even go the whole because you know if you are not Christian, you are Muslim or whatever. We, let's not go into the uh, if they really portray Christian or Muslim trait with regards to their life or something. We don't care. That is their life. Let's just look at what we can see on face value. Why would the APC themselves be thinking, or oh, yeah, that Rutimi Amishi cannot secure them votes? If we recognize Amichi's limitation with respect to electoral fortunes, mm. we, cannot be, we cannot be playing to the gallery and pretend as if nothing is wrong. If Wike will give us good votes, why not be Wike's friends? Being Wike's friends does not amount to disrespecting Amichi in any way. What is important to Amichi himself is that we have votes to win the presidential election. Mm. So therefore, I see this visit as uh, trying to say, oh, <laughs> we are here. How are you doing, Wike? I hope you are good. If you are good, we are good too. Let's roll. But we can say that Jagaban himself is a very seasoned politician as well when it comes to the faith that the APC members have in him and, you know, his choices and what I say, his influence, we would say, of course, when it comes to politics. <laughs> Now, I'm talking about the person of Mr. Peter Obi, does what Mr. Bjorden say here make sense? Obi is a mere sensation. It's a flame. It will go like that and it will come down. Nigerians a election, in my pan is what you're Nigerians elections as. are not run on social media. It is not Obama. This is not America. Let's face it. Nigeria's elections are run on structures, physical structures. What structure does Labour Party have? They don't, I'm not even sure they have a councillor. So is that what we should be talking about but, but here? That's whole Labour. The new Labour. There's no new Labour. Well, has the new Labour gone to it. election? <laughs> has the new Labour gone to election for us to test their strength? Of course not. See, let's get ourselves right. Right? Nigerian politics is not is not is not does not happen by chance it happens by careful planning i'm still going to talk about ashwaju's plan for the youth none of them can come up with that kind of plan for the youth the plan we have in apc ashwaju's candidacy as for the youth is 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 mind blowing tell us, so tell us about it and let me tell you something tell us every about one of us every one of us involved in ashwaju's campaign will have our children in the forefront we're not going to run a campaign and start planning for the youth when our own children live abroad. No way. Now, in as much as you would want to disagree with the whole idea of structure, which is what he's talking about, in case you don't understand what that structure itself means, this is what it actually means. Part of the arguments that have been put forth against uh, the candidature of uh, uh, Peter Obi and Yele Shumre is the argument that they don't have the structure, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you see... The English language came to die in Nigeria. I've said this severally. What do they mean by structure? They mean the capacity to buy votes, the capacity to buy police, the capacity to buy high neck, mm. the capacity to bring thugs. These are the structures to which they speak. And these are valid structures if you are playing the game by the rule of the game. I am of the opinion that if we don't change the game, we can't win. And that is why I keep saying that you have to galvanize a movement. In the Once you galvanize a movement for change, what then happens is that all these structures become useless because the people themselves are the structure. If democracy is meant to be built on citizenship, mm. but there is voters' apathy to the point where you are just under 28, no, just over 27 million people voting in the last presidential oh, election mm. out of a voting population of around 90 million, it meant that you had less than a third of the population participating. And that is with the voters' inflation, underage voting, mm. and everything, in, particularly in the northern part of Nigeria. 
you still had only 27 million. So it then means that you have a less than a third of the populace coming out to vote. Okay, come on. What were you expecting? Because when they talk about structure like this, which is a fact, I think I've said this myself consistently. Politics in Nigeria is more grassroots based than what we do here on social media. I could use my platform, maybe make commentaries that it's kind of like skewed to one person that I might be talking about who is someone I'm rooting for. But it doesn't stop me from giving objective opinions about other people. Now, of course, like Mr. Abiodun himself said, And let me tell you the dynamics. An Atiku has been running for presidency for forever, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> and he has been losing for as long as he has been running. Aswaju has not lost ele an election before, and he will not lose this. Atiku himself has actually lost for quite a long number of time, and when you look at his ability again to get votes this time around, it's quite dicey considering the internal PDP crisis going on right now. So whatever is happening in PDP right now is even a plus to the APC with regards to what they see themselves coming up with during the election. But let's talk about Peter B also at this time. I've seen a lot of fake news fly around, things that are not true and narratives here. Reno Mokri has just been hitting on Peter B from today till tomorrow and even right now was saying, like I posted recently on Facebook, that his life is in danger. Reno is just more of like, you know, giving everybody what to what. The last time he was saying that Tinubu himself is uh, into drug, the next thing now he's talking about Peter B. Of course, we know that he has to be that media person that talks for the person of the PDP or what I say, for the person of Atiku. Like according to him, Atiku is number one, number two, and maybe the third option he would have would be Peter B. So let's just understand that this is politicking happening right here. But again, does the APC really have a plan for the youth asset right now? This is what Mr. Bioden had to say. Aswaju is a resourceful person. He knows where the youth will be most useful and he has told us repeatedly every plan you do with respect to my manifesto must Consider the youth most importantly. Yeah, but how are they galvanized? OB, so now, ju ju just yes. a moment. OB is galvanizing them using the social media. PDP, by the way, if you look at uh, a Banky W who's running on the, you know, for House of Representative, uh, GD Adit, you know, who's the candidate for Lagos, uh, is said to have picked um, uh, Funke Akidele. 15 million, 15.5 million Instagram followers, it's the 1.2 million on Twitter, etc. How are you galvanizing your business beyond asking your kids Steve. to come out? Steve. Yes, sir. Don't let us be, continue to deceive ourselves. Elections are not run on Instagram. The number of rural dwellers who would vote in Kano, Kasina, Kaduna, Ilori, Ogbomosho, outnumbers the youth you see on Instagram. Now, if you look at that, it's more of like, <laughs> right now there is still no plan and they're trying to come up with policies or plans for the youth. But we have seen videos right here of what um, the Jagaban himself has, commentaries he has made about where he sees Nigeria going forward and when, when he regards to his plans for the country. May not be as articulated as a person of Peter Obi, but indeed, we are watching, I would say. A lot of things are really going to be shaky. And uh, when you talk about this whole structure, things would really go south. But for a fact, let me tell you, my dear wonderful audience, you know, social media here is not really where these things happen, even though, of course, social media can be a great tool for the intellectuals and those, because for you to even be watching this video and understanding what I'm saying in English, at least you have some form of education. If P2B's movements can galvanize, they use themselves to come out and become active, because many youths have, of course, have given up on the country when it comes to politicking or what I say voting, because it feels as if the votes do not count. But right now, if there can be that massive turnout, come on, I look at the result of a re um, PVC registration, it was quite alarming, I would say. So 2023 is quite dicey, but right now it's a critical point for the APC as they have not officially picked who is going to be the running mate of Tinubu himself. Peter B has picked his, Atiku himself has also picked his, which was of course the reason why PDP is having some internal crisis right now. But one thing you have to take out from this video is that these people themselves, 
they are all friends. It's all a matter of interest. Is it going to be the obedient people? Is it going to be the articulated? Is it going to be the royal bats? Who is it going to be? I don't know. I'm just here making common sense. <laughs>